programming is furnished by you and your doctor. The content, information, and opinions expressed during the related show are those of the show personalities and guests alone, and not those of Vic Canellis Media Group, its parent, affiliates, or stations. VCMG Live is not responsible for any content, information, or opinions expressed. User bears full responsibility for their reliance on such content, information, or opinions. Ant2.tv presents You and Your Doctor, teaching you to live a longer and healthier life. Proudly sponsored by All County Healthcare, where people are the heart of our business. All County Healthcare is a Medicare certified agency where one call will service all your home care health needs. For more information, call 954 717 7027 or visit our website, allcountyhealthcare.com. Now, Let's get informed to living a longer and healthier life. Here is your host for today's show. Good evening, Good evening, everyone, everyone and everyone. welcome to yet another show of You and Your Doctor, sponsored by All County Healthcare. You're able to listen to us on 96.9 and 95.3. And if you're able to watch us, you're able to watch us on amp2.tv. I'm your host for today, Ms. Rayma Phillips, and today we are welcoming back a very special guest, Ms. Stacy Williams of Williams Medical Group. How are you doing today? Miss Stacy, just give it. Hello. Hi, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. We're so happy to have you back on our show tonight. Thank you for having me back. I'm happy to be here. Of course. So, since the last time that you're on our show, has anything new and exciting happened with Williams Medical Group? Oh, absolutely. Everything has happened. So for our listener um, viewers, <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> for our listener viewers no, listening no, in fine. tonight, um, do you mind go ahead and tell our listeners a little bit about your background and how you're able to start your practice just for the people who've not able to met you the last time you were on? Sure. So my name is Stacy Williams and I'm a nurse practitioner and I've been practicing in the medical field for over 25 years now. I used to be a registered nurse and decided to further my education to become a nurse practitioner so that I can help more pa patients, um, residents, anyone who I felt as if they weren't getting the care they deserved. Mm -hmm. So I felt that I can fill that niche as far as uh, educating them, as far as medication regimen and ensuring that our, our seniors, especially our seniors, are not being over or under medicated. Mm. That is definitely very important. I know I said it last time, I'll say it again. The fact that you're just so attentive with all your patients that come into your practice is just very, very remarkable. And we need those types of, you know, physicians down here, especially in South Florida. Um, so what, definitely. so tell us a little great. bit about what's new at your practice. Actually, so I've been able to expand to more facilities, seeing patients mm -hmm. there. There has been um, a, a great amount of patients that have gotten in contact with me in order to uh, care for them. And this has been a lot of word of mouth, more so than marketing. Mm. Um, it's been pretty incredible. That is so amazing to hear. And one thing I can say, word of mouth, people um, underestimate how powerful it is sometimes, especially when you have a friend telling you about a great physician's office, you're more likely going to take your friend's advice versus something you see on TV. So I'm very, very happy for you. Thank you. It is a very, the medical community is a very small community and mm. word travels fast. Absolutely. And for our listener viewers wondering tonight, Williams Medical Group is located at 9900 West Sample Road, Suite 300 in Coral Springs, Florida. You're able to reach them at 561-765-5179. And you're e able to email them at stacy at williamsmedicalgroup.com. So, uh, Ms. Stacy, tell us a little bit about some of the programs and services that you offer at your practice. Well, we offer, uh, we uh, see patients uh, usually around the ages of 15 and older. 
we do see a lot of uh, 40 year olds up to 100 actually i saw a patient today up to 107 wow and which is pretty amazing definitely no i felt that way <laughs> <laughs> And uh, we provide services, assessments, physicals. If you need the flu shots, um, we do a regular um, pap smears, prostate exams, your blood mm. work, and a lot of education. Mm. So uh, there are a lot of pa- there are a lot of individuals actually that are at over the age of 30 and 40 who come in, and they actually are not aware of a lot of things that their bodies are going through or familiarities like from their families, their genetics and things like that. So when they come in, it actually helps us a little bit more to educate them so they can educate others. Mm, Absolutely. And I know we touched about it a lot in our last conversation about how important it is to educate each and every one of your patients that comes to the door so they know how to properly take care of themselves and take care of their families and um, friends as well. Correct. It is. It's it's extremely important. Mm. I also saw that you have extended office hours as well. How would you say um, opening up your office until 6 p.m. has been able to help some of your patients? Well, actually, it helps a lot of patients because they're individuals who work and Mm. their offices don't close until like 4 or 5 o'clock. So for them to be able to get there and get the care that they need or for whatever the visit is that they need to see us for, then we're actually being able to be there for them. They don't have to end up going to urgent care. We do telehealth visits as well. So mm-hmm. that comes in pretty handy, especially with someone who's ill in late hours at night on the weekends or something yeah. like that. Or even if they're out of town and they need assistance, we can also assist in that manner. Mm, absolutely. And tell us a little bit about your telemedicine and how you're able to use that to further help with your patients' needs. Telemedicine has come a long way. I, I've always liked telemedicine and COVID, due to the pandemic, actually, it's helped um, enhance telemedicine a whole lot where mm. we can reach individuals who are either unable to get to a doctor's office Like I said, someone who's really ill, if they're out of town, they can't get to urgent care depending on the hours. Um, Telemedicine allows us to to help the person in their immediate issue or emergency so Mm. that they don't have to be, um, they don't have to go to the emergency room sometimes. Mm. So telemedicine is, um, you can reach someone by phone like we're talking now. Um, You can do FaceTime, you can do it over an iPad, you can do it over a PC. So either way, you're able to visualize that patient and talk to them face to face. And you can also get assessments on them, depending if they have equipment at home to check their blood pressures and things Mm. like that. So it makes it a lot easier. And the telemedicine software allows us to send prescription medication like you prescribe so that it gets to the pharmacy even quicker than you would even calling it in. So it, it, it helps a whole lot. And I also saw that you also do home visits as well. We do. So there are residents who are unable to come out because either they had a stroke, um, they were hospitalized, they just got home. And a lot of times when someone just gets home from the hospital, depending on what situation it is, whether they had a surgery, like I said, they could have had a heart attack, a stroke or something like that. Mm -hmm. They're not able to get in and out of the car to get to the doctor's office. So we will extend ourselves to go out to their homes. We do the same assessments that we would do in the office, and then we can also have mobile labs go out to them if they need an x-ray, an EKG, an ultrasound. Those things are mobile as well where we can get it out to them. And a lot of times with pharmacies, if we fill their prescriptions, most of the pharmacies deliver. Wow. So you've really thought about everything covering every single, you know, thing that could um, present themselves as an obstacle from patients getting the care that they need. That's truly amazing what you're doing, especially with the telemarketing aspect of it. Would you say that there's any limitations towards some of the telemarketing or telemedicine? I'm so sorry. For the telemedicine? Yes. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you for the compliments. Um, no, there are, the only problem with telemedicine is you can't physically touch the patient. Mm. So hands-on is better when you're in front of someone. You can actually check a temperature. You can touch a site that hurts. You can feel a mass that's there, and you can uh, do a better assessment. So 
So that's your obstacle more, most of the time. Mm-hmm. But other than that, telemedicine can help someone more than hinder them. So I don't really see it being a problem or many obstacles with it. I think that's the only issue is just seeing that person where you can actually put your hands on them to, to do something. Mm. I definitely agree with you there. Um, a big reason for you know telemedicine is saves people a lot of money as well from a trip to the emergency room or a trip to urgent care. They're able to call up their physician, which they actually have a relationship with, and you actually know their medical background and things like that. So it just saves you know on the patient's end a lot of time and money too. It does, and another great aspect of telemedicine is when you talk to a patient and they know that when they're talking to you they're they can be at a more comfortable level so when they're at that level um they're they're more to um they're able to open up more to you and you actually get a lot more information so that you can help them better Mm, absolutely we had a doctor on here one time who talked about the right questions to ask when going to your doctor visits and um they mentioned again that having those at-home visits or those telemedicine visits actually allows patients to share a lot more about the, their conditions and how they're feeling because they don't have as many nerves. And you also don't have that time frame either, like um, a 15-minute visit or a 20-minute visit. You're able to actually communicate everything with your physician. So again, absolutely amazing what you're doing there. Thank you. I totally agree. Mm. So now we're going to get ready for a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back with everyone. Thank you. All County Healthcare has exciting news for any and all patients with COPD or other respiratory ailments. Listen to what renowned pulmonologist Dr. Keith Robinson has to say. Hello, I'm Dr. Keith Robinson, board certified pulmonologist, medical director at Fusion Health Pulmonary Rehabilitation, and a board member with the American Lung Association of South Florida. We have exciting news for patients with COPD. We now offer IPV therapy at home, which has been demonstrated to improve airway clearance, decrease hospitalization, and improve quality of life of patients with COPD. Please call All County Healthcare for more information about this FDA approved therapy. For further information, call All County Healthcare now at 954 717 7027. That is 954-717-7027, or visit our website at allcountyhealthcare.com. You can also find us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Remember, All County Healthcare always puts the patient's needs first. You are listening to You and Your Doctor, Living Longer and Healthier, an informative show that helps you find answers to questions you always wanted to ask but did not have that somebody that could make a difference in your life. Call into the show if you have a question at 888-565-1470, and we will put you on the air to inform all our listeners. Now, back to our show. Welcome back, everyone, to You and Your Doctor, sponsored by All County Healthcare. Again, we have such a very special guest on our show today, Ms. Stacy Williams, who operates at Williams Medical Group. They are located at 9900 West Sample Road, Suite 300 in Coral Springs, Florida. You're able to reach them at 561 765 Five one seven nine, and email them at stacy at williamsmedicalgroup.com. Welcome back, Miss Williams. Thank you. Thank you. So now that we're back from our break, I thought this would be a great transition, especially now that we're starting to get into the holiday season, to talk about a little bit about the depression issues that come along with the holiday season. So that has always been an issue. Mm-hmm. And um, 
the holidays can be the backbone of our relationships. So a lot of uh, many people look forward to the holidays because these are the times that you're not working, you get the time off, you get to spend time with family, and you can buy gifts and all the great things. You think about traveling. So holiday depression sets in when we don't have families to spend with, time to spend with, and we don't have the individuals that we used to spend the time with because they've either passed away or relationships have changed. Um, there's divorce, there's death, there's a lot of other things that have changed in between. Hmm. So what are, what are the most common, I guess, signs of holiday depression, if you would like to call it that, that you see with some of your patients that come in? So a lot of signs that you may see is that, especially with our, I would say, older um, individuals or really depressed individuals, Mm -hmm. they may not like taking showers anymore. They may not want to eat anymore. They may not want to brush their teeth anymore, comb their hair, look presentable anymore. Mm. They may uh, isolate themselves from their for the people around them. They may not sleep the same. They can't stay asleep at night, so they have insomnia. They have trouble falling asleep. And it can be just like you have individuals who actually hurt themselves. Mm. Wow. So for Some, pe- Sorry. Oh, no, you can continue. <laughs> now I was going to say some of the signs you can also see are like they're really sad mm. and their thinking is slow. They may lack energy at times and their interest has slowed in doing things. Mm. So for, with people who may have a friend or they themselves are suffering from this holiday depression, what are some things that you suggest for people to do to help combat these feelings? A lot of things they have to, you know, a lot of things is to acknowledge that they mm-hmm. are feeling depressed. So until someone does that, then they're not going to be able to help themselves get out of the situation. If there are individuals who are around it, they are to get themselves involved in a community service, whether it's church or at a family center or a, um, there have like little centers around or even in communities, they have the country clubs or they have activities going on. It's better to participate in those activities to help take their mind off everything that's going on with them. Um, there's... Uh, if, if they are living in facilities, they have activities that they, pre, they plan throughout the year and even the holidays, and they have events that they take partake in. Hmm. What I would like to say is for our listeners, if you have an, a, a parent or a family member that you know that you don't spend time with or they're alone over the holidays, it, you know, maybe take them out one of the days of the holidays. Mm. You may not have to spend the entire holiday with them, but just an hour with them or a half an hour away from what they're, what they're currently going through can make a huge difference in their life. Maybe drop a gift off to a stranger um, on the road. Just carry things with you and you see someone out there, just hand them a gift. Be kind. That one little thing can make such a huge difference to someone. Mm, absolutely. I went to a big international school and because um, a good majority of the students were international, a lot of them were able to fly home during the holiday seasons. Mm-hmm. And the school is really a bit good mm-hmm. about having activities that these students are able to participate in, especially the ones who are not able to go home because it is, you know, it can be depressing being away from your mm-hmm. family, not able to spend it with your loved ones. So that is extremely good advice for our listeners tonight. Thank you. Definitely. So what? So on the topic of depression, would you say there has been an increase with your patients who have been experiencing symptoms of depression, especially over these past few years? Oh, definitely. Mm. Uh, reading about depression, I do read a lot of articles, and the statistics show that there's over 34 million Americans who are like 65 or older who suffer from depression every year. So it's, and since the pandemic, regardless that a lot of people are out and about, the depression has set in, a lot of anxiety has set in, and a lot of individuals have started to harm themselves a lot more, especially Mm -hmm. in the younger um, adults. 
I've seen that more often. So, and the things that bother them the most is that they feel like they don't have anyone. They feel mm. isolated. They feel like they're made fun of or whatever the reason is. So I feel like we need to spread uh, um, happiness more than sadness and focus on that. There are so many things that we can do with that. And we need to cut the alcohol out because alcohol is a uh, depressant. You know, many people mm-hmm. feel like, okay, let's, let's have a drink and we'll be merry. You're merry that for that moment, but once it starts to wind down, it becomes a depressant and makes the depression worse. Mm. So it is better to do things that, that can increase how you're feeling um, to bring that happiness on instead of, you know, doing those other kind of things. Mm, I definitely agree with you, especially when um, students are in their freshman, sophomore year of college, being away from home, sometimes you have the seasonal depression that kicks in. And I can definitely um, say from, you know, witnessing things like this happen myself, that alcohol is one of the biggest contributors to those long going feelings of sadness of the depression of the depression. I I do agree. I definitely agree. Um, Mm. You know, what I would like to tell the listeners is you hear this all around all the time and people take it as a joke when someone says to love yourself, when Mm -hmm. someone says to try to find that happiness within yourself. But no, you don't really know how that is until you actually do it. Mm -hmm. And when you learn to love who you are as a person being alone then nothing else really matters. Like you can find happiness anywhere you go. Mm. So that's where it starts. And if you can't start there, no matter who comes around you to try to make you happy, to try to do things for you, if you cannot find that within yourself, it's not going to work. You're still going to stay depressed and be unhappy. Mm. So we all go through things on a daily basis. There's, you know, there are people dying every day. Obviously, I'm in the medical field, and I and I deal with a lot of seniors. So I'm seeing death. I'm seeing patients on hospice. I'm seeing all kinds of things. But you have to look at what you do have. Look how the kind of life you have. There's a reason for you to be here, and you need to appreciate every moment of it. Mm, absolutely. Especially as a young person myself, and I work as a personal trainer, and I tell my clients all the time that even when you're having these bad thoughts, even when you're having these feelings, mm-hmm. find your outlet, whether it be fitness, whether it be painting, whether it be going for a walk, find your outlet so that you have ways to express yourself without, you know, dealing with some of the negative um I guess, negative ways to express yourselves, visa like drugs, alcohol, or even just self-harm and things like that. So finding outlets that make you happy as a person. So I definitely agree with you on that matter. Absolutely, absolutely. Just talking gets, you know, if you talk about it, talk how you're feeling. And a lot of, you know, a lot of the things that people tend to forget is, You don't have to talk to everyone, but find that person that you can talk to. Mm. And for men, men are the the ones who commit suicide more than women. So men don't talk a lot to people about how they're feeling because there's a stigma about men being men. So, but it's okay. It's okay for you to have emotions. It's okay for you to have feelings and it's okay for you to talk because at Mm. the end of the day, we're all human beings and there's a, you know, we, we all need that outlet. Absolutely. And we are starting to come to a close on our show now, but just a few last words to end our show today. Please, everyone, take the advice that Miss Stacy Williams is providing today. If you have a friend, whether you're a male, whether you're a female, reach out to them, especially during this holiday season. Make sure that they're not alone or, again, dropping off a gift, getting food for churches, getting food for families, and making sure people feel welcomed and loved around you. And I just want to, again, wish everyone a very happy holiday season. And again, look out for the ones around you, especially this time of year. Thank you. Can you hear me? Thank you for letting us share longer and healthier lifestyle. If you have a doctor or are a doctor and wish to be on the show, call Amp2TV at 866-244-5422 and we will put you on the air as soon as possible.
Tune in next week for more information on living longer and having a healthier life. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strong.